Join us for the annual Christmas parade Sunday, November 25th at 5 p.m. in Hamilton. Bring the whole family to get into the Christmas spirit. There will be free goodies for the kids and great entertainment for all. Experience new dazzling lights and floats as Santa makes his way along the parade route. Kick off the holiday season Sunday, November 25th at 5 p.m. with the Marketplace 2018 Christmas Parade. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Friday, November the 23rd. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us. Gay rights activists celebrating today after the Court of Appeal rejected the government's latest challenge on same-sex marriage. You'll recall Justice Ian K. Willey upheld a legal challenge to domestic partnerships in favor of Bermudian Rod Ferguson that the act was unconstitutional, but the government appealed that decision. Here are the details. Cheers of joy and round of applause rang out from the crowded courtroom this morning. We're ecstatic about it. Um, this is a third time win, so we're happy they got it right again, and hopefully now that'll be the end of the discussion. Same-sex marriage had been legalized in May last year, but Parliament subsequently passed the Domestic Partnership Act, restricting marriage to be between a man and a woman. That move was challenged successfully in June this year, but the government appealed. However, the Court of Appeal today ruled that provisions in the DPA were for a religious purpose and violates a person's freedom of conscience, thus is void and unenforceable. The ruling reopens the door to gay marriages. We could be more thrilled. I mean, this is now the third time that we've done this. We hear about talk of going to Privy Council. Um, you've heard about talk about costs. I am hopeful that the government will get a uh, full and proper written opinion, as they should do, with regard to the merits of going to the Privy Council, to read through this judgment very, very carefully and arrive at the conclusion that it's probably folly and not to spend any more of the taxpayers' money, you know, in this cause. So the, the sun's going to come up tomorrow, you know, hopefully some people will get married and everybody will, will get on with their lives. And that's where we need to, to be at now. It's, it's just getting exhausting, you know, from the, from the standpoint I say it on behalf of, you know, the, the LBGT community. It must be exhausting. They must be tired of this. And there's only so long you can go on. You heard the government talk about flip-flopping. Well, stop flip-flopping. A lawyer for Out Bermuda says this matter has set a global precedent for same-sex marriage cases. When the government changed the law on sexual discrimination, they pulled the ladder from under our feet because we didn't have the option that every other court uh, had. And so we had to find a wholly new argument. So the freedom of conscience argument is, is not, was novel. And that's it's revolutionary because in many countries, particularly in the Caribbean, other, other parts of the world, they don't have sexual orientation discrimination legislation. But they all have freedom of conscience legislation. So this case is revolutionary because every country that has a freedom of conscience provision, which is most, now has a wholly new avenue of approach. So uh, in the UK, for example, uh, Northern Ireland is the only part of the United Kingdom that doesn't have same-sex marriage. I expect that tomorrow morning we're going to see an application in Northern Ireland, when I say tomorrow morning, soon. Uh, bring in an application on the freedom of conscience. No one has done this before. No one has done it in Europe. On average in Bermuda, he says there were 1.3 marriages per month. And if the government choose to appeal, a stay could be granted. In the Privy Council, we have probably the most liberal bench we've ever had. It's led by Lady Hale, who is the first uh, female head of the English Supreme Court. Uh, and she's also one of the leading human rights lawyers in the UK. We relied on many of her judgments in this case. Mm -hmm. They recently promoted Lady Justice Arden to the, to the uh, Supreme Court in England, who would sit in the Privy Council, therefore. And so we have in the Privy Council a, an amazing court. And uh, I don't know if the Crown intend to appeal to go there. Uh, if they do, then uh, I think we would get a good reception. Judith Aidu Saltis is the first gay woman to marry in Bermuda and says it has not been an easy road. We're very happy. We're proud and we're grateful to the court and to the people of Bermuda for going through this process. We know it's not easy for minds to change or hearts to change, but. Uh, we're grateful and we're grateful for the laws 
thank God for justice. Yes. Any worries about the future in terms of whether government will, will appeal this to the Privy Council? I don't worry because at the end of the day, there's so many of us that already got married. And guess what? We're still here. Mary Ellen Jackson says she chose to challenge the government because she believes, quote, equality under the law is every Bermudian's birthright. To be part of something that's so big and it means so much to so many, um, it's amazing. The government issued a joint statement. Attorney General Kathy Lynn Simmons says the judgment of the court is being considered and the government will determine its next steps within the prescribed period of 21 days in which an application for leave to appeal must be made. Walter Raban, the Minister of Home Affairs, adding... We must weigh the significant implications for the expectation of Bermudians that laws passed by their elected representatives and that reflect their democratically expressed views will be upheld. He adds there are important issues at stake in this case and this government will fully consider the legal position and the fundamental constitutional issues in coming to a decision on next steps. From the House of Assembly today, allegations of wanton mismanagement of the public purse by the former OBA government after it constructed only 20 of a proposed 100 housing units at a cost of more than $20 million. The original plan was priced at $36 million. The claim coming from Public Works Minister Lieutenant Colonel David Birch, who laments that materials brought in to complete the prefabricated units were allowed to deteriorate to where it's no longer usable. Minister Birch calling for the Auditor General to take action on these findings. I know for a fact, having served in every previous PLP government, that had it been us, there'd have been an order to, a special report by the Auditor General by now. Um, but more important than that, I think that if the fact that you build a two, three or four bedroom unit in this country in a 20 unit complex for $1.25 million warrants somebody saying something. Um, and I think it warrants an answer from those people who are accused more so than suggesting that, you know, there were irregularities when they came into the project and they just decided to, to carry on. That's not their MO. Their MO is to raise holy hell about how incompetent we are with finances and cause an investigation. None of that took place. And so what I would like to see answered is how do you justify the decision that you made and keep it quiet? Yes, it started under the PLP, but it was handed to you as a, as a project and a plan to build 100 houses. You made the decision to reduce that to 20 with the full knowledge that doing so would send the costs up because you included infrastructure and various other things. Uh, it was an untraditional build. I personally don't like them. Um, had I been the minister, I probably would not have agreed to such um, because I think that you have so many unknowns. But be that as it may, it would have provided 80 more homes than we have, that we don't have now. And it would have made my life as the current minister a lot easier because I, we have a constant clamor for people who are looking for adequate housing and we have a dearth of inventory in order to be able to do that. And so they need to answer. But not so fast, says former Public Works Minister Trevor Manez. He argues the OBA government was forced into the action it took with regard to that project. The responsibility for that lies with the PLP. The PLP, as you well know, took uh, on a number of ill-advised projects, and that was one of the ill-advised projects. Another one, of course, with Grand Atlantic. Even now, we have the minister talking about creating low-cost housing. I mean, he's got Grand Atlantic sitting there empty. Why would you need to create low-cost housing when you have it sitting right there? And when we came on board, Bermuda had lost, you know, government has said recently that we lost 6,500 work permits. I mean, that's probably, I don't know, that's well over 6,500 people. The one thing we didn't need was more housing. When I came on board, even Wedco, with their own housing they had at Burrs Island, had empty units at Burrs Island that they couldn't fill. We had Grand Atlantic that was empty. We had nobody to fill these units. So what we did was we took the lemons that the PLP handed us and we made lemonade. So we created very nice units there with the ones that were already done. 
and we got the, the nicest project we could out of the disaster that we were handed by the previous government. How do you justify the costs as highlighted by the... There were, number, there were a number of irregularities with those contracts. There were also uh, dealings with Cross Island. The whole thing was a disaster. We had to just stop the flow of blood. There's nothing we could do. If we had 100 houses sitting there empty today, you'd be saying to me, why did you carry through on that project and waste all that money when we didn't need it? Either way, it was an ugly situation, but it's the PLP's fault. We'll have more for you after this short break, including all the latest weather news. Stay with us. You can count on us. Little cheap Gallup or Macintosh apples, two pound bag, just three ninety nine. Fresh Purdue chicken drumsticks, a dollar ninety nine per pound. Craft mayonnaise, 30 ounce jar, special price, $5.59. Carnation evaporated milk, 410 gram tin, only $1.59. Sargento sliced cheeses, 6.7, 8 ounce packages, hot price, $3.99. All stores open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. More people today rely on Mailbox's U.S. Express to bring their internet shopping into Bermuda than any other shipping service. Why? Because it's cheaper, quicker, and our staff are friendlier. Large international couriers charge more than $80 to bring a one-pound package into Bermuda. When you use U.S. Express, you pay only $19.50. So when you're shopping online, trust the service that brings in more packages to Bermuda than anyone else. Mailboxes U.S. Express. Sign up today. Treat yourself and your loved ones this Christmas at Diamonds International in Dockyard. Sparkling diamond rings from Crown of Light. Stunning gold and diamond bangles by De Beers Forever Mark. And brilliant tanzanite and gold necklaces. During the holidays, there is 15 to 75% off all merchandise. And this watch as a free gift with every purchase. Plus 5% of all shopping proceeds will be donated to the LCCA charity. There is nothing comparable on the island to the truly outstanding collection at Diamonds International in Dockyard. Win a trip or two to the 2019 Trinidad Carnival. When you purchase a car from Bermuda Motors, your name will be entered into a draw for a chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip for two, including flights, accommodation, and tickets to the Trinidad Carnival. Visit Bermuda Motors on Church Street or bermudamotors.bm. Thanks for staying tuned in with us tonight. Contrary to what some may believe, the Chamber of Commerce is still pushing its Buy Bermuda campaign aimed at encouraging the public to support local retailers. The Chamber has long warned the public of the impact to the economy of residents choosing to shop online instead of locally. Paula Clark, the Chamber's Retail Division Chair, told Bermuda Broadcasting News the Buy Bermuda campaign, which once featured media advertisements, is very much alive. Well, Buy Bermuda uh, campaign really has, has been going for uh, a number of years and really it's bringing focus into the value and variety and selection of goods and products that, that retailers have to offer its, uh, it, our community here. So um, although you may have not seen Buy Bermuda slogan except of course on my car, um, we, we, the retailers are always promoting Buy Bermuda uh, throughout the year. There's always deals. Um, my colleagues in in, across the retail um, uh, div, uh, sector, work really hard in negotiating, negotiating the very best prices and best value of timely merchandise that's current merchandise and bringing the very best to Bermuda. Ms. Clark, who's also the chief executive of Gibbons Company, repeated the call for an increase in the population to help boost local business, in particular a boost in younger families. We do have, we, everybody's aware that we do have um, an aging population and I think that what we need are, are more young families here, uh, families that um, children are going to school, they're using all of the services that, uh, the great services that Bermuda has to offer and that spreads out through the entire uh, economic sector. Um, retailers continue to evolve, they continue to um, energize, uh, they reinvest in, in systems, um, and and service. So, in order to be able to do all of those things, we need we need more people um, shopping in Bermuda. Weather now, and let's head over to the AccuWeather headquarters for the latest. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. 
We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. This AccuWeather forecast here on ZBM is brought to us by our friends at the BFNM Insurance Group. We have a high impact forecast for this weekend, but right now it is downright chilly out there. Low 60s for most of the day. We have a lot of clouds out there as well. Uh, plenty of cloud cover. You can see that uh, direction from the wind coming in from the uh, north and west and north northwest that has produced instant cloud cover as that cold air has uh, moved out over the relatively mild water of the Atlantic and uh, some of that sh uh, shield of cloud cover has made it all the way down into Bermuda with the cool air. But as we move forward, our attention turns more to the west and southwest as a strengthening disturbance is going to bring us some trouble. Now, there won't be much rain until we get into the middle of the weekend, but um, it's cool out there. 62 degrees, a fleeting shower if possible, mainly south of the island. Humidity is between 60 and 65 percent. Wind is pretty active from the northeast. We have some big waves out there. It's going to be a tumultuous time. Two to three foot waves on the inside, but six to 13 foot waves are um, surrounding the island, uh, around the periphery of the island. So we have a small craft warning now and through tomorrow into Saturday morning. That steps up to a gale warning on Saturday night into Sunday morning. That's when the worst of this next disturbance moves right on through. And then that will be uh, relaxed to another small craft warning to follow for the end of Sunday into Sunday night. Uh, we do have a high tide coming up at 831 tonight. Low tide, 2.30 a.m., another high tide at 9.01 Saturday morning. Low tide in the middle of your Saturday afternoon. So tonight, mostly cloudy. Most of the showers will stay away to the south. 60 degrees, your low. It's chilly out there. We're already close to that at this point. It'll be a breezy and uh, damp day tomorrow at times with some spotty showers becoming more likely late in the day. We'll be around 71 for your high, so much milder than today has been. But the wind will pick up and the rain will eventually roll in. Futurecast shows that stiff breeze from the north uh, influencing much of the western Atlantic. And as we move forward in time, uh, watch as this area of low pressure strengthens. You can see that circulation, some heavier, heavier rain, and that enhanced area of rain is going to be marching on in on Saturday in the mid to late evening and on through the overnight hours. There could even be a few rumbles of thunder. Uh, localized flooding and poor drainage areas is also a concern. Uh, and we are watching this area of low pressure. Uh, it probably won't become a true tropical system, but there's a small chance that Maybe uh, later on, after it moves through Bermuda, it could become a little more organized and possibly uh, we could be looking at a subtropical storm for a brief time in the final week of hurricane season as it would be pulling away. Showers into Jamaica, Barbados and Trinidad. It is still very chilly. Some parts of the northeast broke records for all-time coldest November air. Uh, monthly records in seven locations in parts of New York, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania uh, this morning. And as we move forward, it'll be a little bit wetter and much milder, closer to normal for the weekend into eastern North America. Uh, looking at our forecast, though, Saturday showers, Saturday night, we get wet and windy. And then into Sunday morning, a few fleeting leftover showers linger. We're going to get milder for a few days, and then another front brings us showers, maybe even a thunderstorm on Wednesday. But look out for that Saturday. Saturday evening, Saturday night, not the nicest of times to be out and about. Back to you. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. My name is Kevin Roberts. I'm a taxi driver slash ambassador. My father's with BFNM, so am I. My half of my family always been seen to be good for me to find them. I tried a different provider at one time, but I wasn't too happy with the competition because back then it took too long to settle claims. They questioned every claim, and I never really had that problem with BFNN. I'm quite happy with it. Christmas in Bermuda is a special time for most of us. Unfortunately for some families in Bermuda, there's no warm Christmas. This year, many families will be in need. It's the 30th anniversary of the Lions Clubs of Bermuda and the Marketplace helping share the Christmas spirit, so let's help take care of each other. Shop at any Marketplace, Shopping Center, Modern Mart, or A1 stores and purchase extra tins of non-perishable items. Once you have purchased these items, place your food donation into Santa's bin located at the front of the store. The Lions Clubs will collect your food contributions and assemble them into hampers to be delivered to the families in need around the island. Christmas comes once a year. Help make it a special time for every family in Bermuda. Sponsored in part by the Bermuda Broadcasting Company. Share the Christmas spirit.
Bermuda Broadcasting Company and lead sponsor HSBC is pleased to present the annual Christmas Boat Parade 2018. Join me, Keeble the Captain Burgess. And me, co-host Diane Carlson, live from the flagpole on Front Street as we bring you the latest on the decorated Christmas boats in this year's competition on Ocean 89 starting at 6.30 p.m. We'll have special guests joining us for interviews during the event. This live coverage of the Christmas Boat Parade on Ocean 89 is December 8th. This special presentation has been brought to you by lead sponsor HSBC. Surface Trends has been serving Bermuda for over 25 years, supplying and installing tile and natural stone. We have a large and stock selection of beautiful porcelain wood planking, including our exclusive Bermuda cedar tile. You will also find Bermuda's best in stock selection of countertops, including natural granites, exotic quartzites, and sile stone engineered quartz in all the newest colors. Our team will be happy to help you. Stop by our showroom at 17 Serpentine Road or give us a call at 295-8005. Preparations are well underway for the Marketplace Christmas Parade this Sunday. Seen as a curtain raiser for the holiday season, the event draws thousands of people to the city and features live music and, of course, the gumbays. The parade, now in its 29th year, starts at 5 o'clock with special guest Santa Claus leading the way from the junction of Church Street and Parlaville Road. Our Ian Rollins caught up with organizer of Sunday's event, Seth Stutzman, who is the president of Marketplace and the company's advertising and purchasing manager, Natalie Rigo. We have 24 floats in the parade. We have Toy Story this year, that's new. We also have Disney. We have about 20, 20 people helping us out putting the floats together now. So we'll spend a lot of time tonight working these floats and building them. And then tomorrow we'll finish up whatever we have. And then we're, you know, hoping for uh, good weather on Sunday, no rain. <laughs> This year we have the Royal Bermuda Regimental Band on, on board, so we're very excited to have them on board. We also have Sparky and the Bermuda Fire Service on board. We're passionate about Christmas. We're passionate about serving our communities, and we're passionate about doing this every year so that we, uh, we get to kind of make a splash and, and kind of set the whole holidays off right. I put my lap to Santa Claus. Can I expect a gift this year? Yeah. It depends because I've heard rumors about naughty and nice, and I don't, we'll have to see where you're at. So don't forget the Christmas parade this Sunday at 5 o'clock in the city of Hamilton. There were no arrests for impaired driving last evening as the police conducted road sobriety checks. Members of the public are reminded not to drive or ride under the influence as road sobriety checkpoints continue tonight and this weekend, November 24th and 25th in Hamilton Parish, Devonshire, Pembroke, Paget, and Southampton. Police thank the motoring public for their patience and cooperation while the road sobriety checkpoints are in operation. Still to come, sports news in just a few minutes. Snow White Cauliflower, only $3.99 each. Fresh assorted pork chops at $3.49 per pound. Freshly baked apple or pumpkin pies, hot price, $6.99 each. Scott Comfort Plus bath tissue, four rolls, only $3.49. Save a dollar on Vieira's Portuguese rolls, hot price, $4.79. All stores open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. At Argus, our interest is you. Each of you, around here, we know that when two people seem the same, they can have very different insurance needs. For their health, home, work, and future. Which is why we take the time to get to know you, as an individual, so we can provide insurance coverage that fits your life. Because after all, our interest is you. Turning to sports, welterweight fighters Nikki Bascom of Bermuda and David Martinez of Mexico have arrived for tomorrow night's Redemption Fight Night. Mike Sharp reports. 
If you are yet to decide if you are attending the IBA International Welterweight title fight at Southampton Fairmont tomorrow night, it's too late. The fight is sold out. The president of the Bermuda Boxing Federation, Nathan Dill, says the two main fighters are here. The, the Mexicans are actually staying with me, residing with me, so they're, they're fine, they're straight, um, they're, they're uh, up in Somerset, talked off, training ready, they're making their way around the neighborhood, I hear, so um, yeah, they're, they're, they're um, here and they're feeling very welcome in Bermuda. And Nicky? Uh, he has arrived, uh, we expect to see him tonight, uh, Friday night, at the weigh-in at uh, the Fairmont Southampton. Has the fight been sold out? It is absolutely sold out. In my pocket are the last four tickets, which, you know, my mother's granny's sister's gold mask, auntie is calling for, and um, I expect by the time I leave her them to be gone. However, it will be live streamed on um, pay-per-view on, online. So, but it's a strong undercard as well. Uh, we do have a strong undercard. Um, thank you to my federation. They very much uh, made it very easy for us. The coaches put together a solid card. Uh, we do, did lose one fight, which you would see announced, but with an 11 card undercard, um, I'm really thinking that people are going to really feel like they got a good night um, full of action. Moving on to the Thanksgiving basketball classic, Crossroads Christian High School of Chicago crushed Bermuda in the opening match at Barclay Institute. Their head coach, Linton Ellis, summed up the lopsided victory this way. We're just pleased that we uh, were able to come out and really just work on some things and execute. And, um, you know, I love the Bermuda team in that, they, you know, I can see they're a much younger team than we are, but they never quit and they kept trying to execute. And that that's the, you know, the building blocks of becoming better down the road. And so just really pleased that, you know, we were able to go out. We played a decent game. Nobody got hurt. But, you know, we're looking forward to, um, you know, some as, the, as we go on through the tournament. I know the competition will get tighter and stiffer, and so I'm just trying to hold my guys to execution and see if we can get some stuff done right and just keep seeing how far we can go in this thing. Did he think it would be such a convincing victory? I always think it's going to be a convincing win. I, you know, I'm, I'm just being honest. We work hard. I push my guys hard, and I know we're kind of small in number, but I push them hard, and they know how to play the game. Ever so often, you know, they're teenagers, so some guys will just kind of lose focus and miss assignments and the like. But for the most part, they were holding each other accountable, which is one of the real big things that we've talked about this year. And so it's, you know, it's pleasing to see them hold each other accountable and be able to execute some things. What are the statistics for you in your conference? Are you conference champions? Well, in the past we were, but that's in the past. The last two years, we were the conference, the regional champions, but we've graduated four guys and we've lost a couple other guys. Chris Crumpler, the first match of the Thanksgiving Classic is now behind us with Chicago defeating Bermuda. Yeah, it was a good game. Uh, Bermuda took some licks, but I think it was just because they was fresh. Uh, kind of nervous, a lot of fear, anxiety type of movement. And Chicago came ready. They came ready, they came strong, they came together. They had a plan, and they executed, and unfortunately we did it. But uh, we got another game, and we're looking forward to it. So it was like 80 odd to 20? Yeah, 86 to 26. 86 to 26? Yeah. That's 60, uh, 60 points. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was a rough first half for us. Uh, we did bounce back somewhat the second half. Uh, but it took us too long to get going, and unfortunately, time ran out. Chicago's head coach, Linton Ellis, I think his son was one of the top players, top scorers. Yeah, he's one of the top players in the tournament, DJ Ellis, and uh, they've been to the national championship for home school in Chicago for the past two years, so they're no scrub. They know how to play basketball. So how many points did he get? 20. And I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Thanks, Mike, and that's all from us tonight. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and I hope you have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Good night. Jasmine Patterson's wardrobe and makeup is provided by Gibbons Company.